Zechariah chapter 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. <clears throat> so there is a world war yet coming. What world war number will it be? Four or five. But there is at least a world war three coming. And God will gather all the nations, which they're already gathered together in New York. But their main goal, according to the Bible, is to be against Israel. So no Christian has anything should be with the United Nations at all. UNICEF, all these... God has already told you that their purpose is to go against Israel. God has got them together to destroy them. And the city shall be taken. <clears throat> Jerusalem shall be taken. The houses raffled. The women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Not be cut off. So there's going to be a redmond. <clears throat> then, uh, forgive me for my throat. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against these nations, as huh? against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. Joshua ten fourteen. Now look at that. Is God able to stop war? Yes, He can. What does it say? I will gather all nations against Israel, Jerusalem to battle. Alright. And the city shall be taken. God allows it completely. And yet that same God said thou shalt not kill. There's a difference between killing and there's a difference between war. And there's a difference between the anger of God. Against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. <clears throat> so God's going to allow them to attack. And their attacking is going to bring God to attack. And his feet, God, shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. Toward the east. <coughs> And toward the west, trying to keep my voice going. And there shall be a very great valley. And half the mountain shall be moved toward the north, and half of it toward the south. You're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ plant his feet on this Mount of Olives, and it's going to split into two. It's not going to be a volcano, it's going to be a massive mountain crate. Not an earthquake. We're going to see earthquake in a minute. A mountain quake. He's going to crack this mountain and make a valley. When's that ever happened? <coughs> oh, I'm trying to. He shall flee to the valley of the mountains. The Jews. For the valley of the mountain shall reach unto a zeal. Yea, ye shall flee. Like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Amos chapter 1 verse 1. And the Lord my God shall come. You were born again, Christian? Are you saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Look what it said. Does the Old Testament say anything about church? There they are right there. All saints with me. There's the church. There you are on horseback, according to Revelation. And I don't even have a note in my Bible, by the Bible, by Schofield, to put that back to Revelation. How'd you miss that one? 
But you can tell me, oh, this could be omitted, this shouldn't be, or this. Kofi has notes in here about perverted Bibles, where he totally missed that note, Revelation, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. There you are. You're going to see Jesus put his feet on Mount of I've never been to Mount of Olives. I don't plan on going there in my lifetime. And if I don't go there during my lifetime, when I do see it then, I'm going to watch it crack right in half. It shall come to pass in that day, second advent, that the light shall not be clear nor dark. <coughs> But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord. Not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at the evening time it shall be light. At the end of the seven years of tribulation period there is no sun, there is no moon, there is no absolutely no light. The next light you see is coming from the tunnel. It's coming from the angry Lord Jesus Christ. The earth will be darkened like it was in, in Exodus. In Egypt it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem half of them toward the former sea half of them toward the hinder sea in the summer and the winter shall it be look at that there's a river now there's a difference when you come back to what we read the other night oh, where is it? 13 1 in that day shall be a fountain open to the house of David. That's the Lord Jesus Christ That's not the same thing. We're reading here. Here's a little river That's not in the land right now Living waters <coughs> Ezekiel says that these waters will give life Ezekiel 47 Revelation 22 there will be living waters there will be all kinds of fish the fishing industry will come back and you won't need a fishing game warren. There'll be all kinds of fish. And the Lord said it. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Now is that today? Huh? It's in the summer and in the winter shall it be. Telling us that there will be seasons in the millennium. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. That's not today. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Paul says there's another Jesus. There are other Jesus. There are all kinds of gods. There are all kinds of Jesus. <coughs> one day there'll be one. All the land shall be turned as the plain from Giba to Rima, south of Jerusalem. It shall be lifted up and the inhabitants in her place, from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Heniel unto the king's wine presses. And this is a description of gates and walls of Jerusalem. Men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. This is verse not today. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. That's not today. Jerusalem, Salam, city of peace. That's not today. Jerusalem, the city of peace, is a prophetic name to what that city is going to be. <clears throat> this shall be the plague wherein the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. <clears throat> their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Yeah, forgive me. Their eyes shall consume away in their hold. Their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Hollywood stole from the Bible. That's what you see in horror movies. That's what's going to happen in Joel chapter 2. That's going to happen when Jesus Christ comes back angry, the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
that sword that comes out of his mouth, look what it does. Jesus will be worse than a nuclear bomb. You'll be consumed standing on your feet. <clears throat> it shall come to pass in that day that a great tomo from the Lord, a great tomo, shall be among them. They shall lay hold everyone on the hand of his neighbor. <coughs> and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem shall also fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Gold and silver and apparel and great abundance. Oh look at that. The World National Council Bank. The great Walmart. Everything going to be gathered together. You take all the money today. Who has it all? Who cares? Judah's going to grab it all up one day. That's the problem in Germany before World War II. The Jews were getting rich and Germany was going under. <coughs> so shall be the plague of the horse. Of the mule. Of the camel. Of the ass of the beast that shall be in these tents as the plague. Oh, I'm trying so hard. What's the plague? We just read it. Verse 12. Wasn't there a time in the Old Testament the army fled away? Three lepers went and they found all the booty while the city sat in hunger. They were eating dubs, doo doo. They were eating an ass's head. God frightened the enemy. They took off, and there's all their wealth. That's happening again. The spoil of the nations are going to be left for Israel to gather. It shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations. Which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, capital K. The Lord of hosts. Look at this. This is the nations now to keep the feast of the tabernacle. The law is back in the millennium and now the Gentiles are going to have to do it. <coughs> It shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, capital K, the Lord of hosts, El Nemo, shall happen in global warming. Absolutely not. Even upon them shall be no rain. Look who controls the weather. We are in the millennium. And if people don't come to worship the king, they'll get drought. So there is still some kind of rebellion in the millennium. If the family of Egypt go not up. Now this is a sample. If. And come not. Wait a minute. Family of Egypt in the millennium? They have no rain. They shall be the plague. Wherein the Lord will smite the heathen. That come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Every year. Seventh month. You pack up and go to Jerusalem. How would you like to do that today? Oh you know what America would do today? If that was today? Raise the air rates. 200%. <coughs> Time to go to Jerusalem. Fares now $500 a seat. You know it. You know, you've got to have health insurance. you got to have auto insurance. Let's raise the rates. It won't be so in the millennium. 
This shall be the punishment of Egypt. Punishment, no rain. And the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of the tabernacles. No rain. That's, God says, if you don't do what I tell you to do, I'll punish you. How, how will I punish you? No rain. No crops. Nothing to drink. Your animals die. You can't bathe. You can't cook. You can't survive. That's a punishment. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses. That's something interesting. All capital. Holiness unto the Lord. I wonder if that's our horses. Because Jesus wears a title that's all capital, isn't it? King of King, Lord of Lords. We're coming back on horseback. In that day is the day of the second advent. Shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. You know where else there were bells? The priest garment. What does Revelation 1 say we are? We're priests. Wouldn't it be great if as Santa Claus we come jingling along? A one horse open sleigh. See, Santa Claus stole from God. Santa Claus is an antichrist. And the pots in the Lord's house. Uh oh. The Lord's house. What's that? That's the tabernacle. That's the temple. There it is. Shall be like the bulls before the altar. The altar was the holy place, the brazen altar. <coughs> the pots that are in the Lord's house and all the chambers are going to be just as holy as the bowls before the altar that held the blood. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem. Come on, God. 66 books and you're writing about a pot? Do you know what's going to be in the millennium? Pots. <laughs> Does that help you a lot? And you know what those pots are going to be? And every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all, that, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them the pots and sieve that's to boil therein. And in that day shall be no more the Canaanite. He's of Ham. One of Jesus' disciples was a Canaanite, Simon. Do you know what Israel was supposed to do to the Canaanites? They were supposed to get rid of them all. You know why? They were having problems with sin, they were having a problem with sex. They were having a problem with idolatry. God told them, kill them all. You know what David was doing to the horses because of these Canaanites? In the house of the Lord of hosts. And we close another book.